Hello everybody, I am Chip Walton with Northern Brewer and this is Brewing TV. I'm standing here in the classroom and brew area of Northern Brewer Minneapolis where a few months ago I was lucky enough to take part in a pretty cool brew day with the one and only John Palmer, author of How to Brew, good old JP. About a month ago, many of you may have noticed I put out a video um, we edited on Northern Brewer's homebrew video library called All Grain Brewing with John Palmer. That video was shot during the same brew session but focused a little bit more on the technical side of John Palmer's all grain brew process. What we're going to do here in this episode of Brewing TV is look a little bit more specifically at the recipe development from concept all the way through brew day. So we're going to ride along on a brew day. You're going to learn a little bit more about the wacky inner workings of John Palmer's brew brain. And then I'll meet you back here on the other side for a quick tasting note of the beer and to let you know when you can expect a kit from Northern Brewer and John Palmer. So sit back, relax, get your learn on, off a of brew, brew for all. Hi, I'm John Palmer. I'm the author of How to Brew, and I'm here today in uh, beautiful Minneapolis. It's kind of an exception to the rule, I think. But uh, here at Northern Brewer, at their fine new uh, Minneapolis store, it's really one of the nicest stores I've ever seen. My name is Alon Clegus Munt. I've been working at Northern Brewer uh, since November. I actually helped put together the Minneapolis store here. Today I'm helping John Palmer brew his Oaked Mild. Today I'm going to be brewing a batch of what we call Palmer's Oaked Mild. Uh, this is a mild uh, recipe, mild being a British style, um, similar to a brown ale, but lower gravity. Um, very often it was, uh, in the, historically it was made by taking the second runnings um, from a larger uh, beer, such as a porter or a brown ale, and, um, and brewing with those second runnings, a uh, low gravity beer and called a mild. In this case, um, we're brewing it, you know, direct. The, the idea for this recipe came about a couple years ago at the uh, National Homebrewers Conference here in Minneapolis in 2010. And uh, um, Mike Dawson and Chip were interviewing me for Brewing TV. Then uh, towards the end of that clip, uh, Mike asked, I've always sensed from your books mm -hmm. a close kinship with you because I feel that we are both close readers of J.R.R. Tolkien. And I've always wanted to ask you what you think the hobbits were drinking. What oh. sort of beer did they have? Uh, you know, I, th I think uh, they'd be looking at uh, an oak-aged mild, um, something like that. Could I hit you up for a recipe at some point? Like a sure. recreationist Shire yeah. ale recipe? Okay. I'd be happy to. Look for that, viewers. <laughs> Turned out that there, there was a lot of interest in the, what that recipe might be like. So. I uh, put one together and uh, we've talked about me coming out here for a couple of years now and, and brewing it and today is the day. So we're going to finally brew this beer and I'm pretty excited about it. Well, when I originally named this recipe uh, for Dawson, um, I, I called it Belladonna Tooks Oaked Mild. Um, if you read um, the, the Fellowship of the Ring, I think it's when the, the first five pages or so they talk about um, uh, the parentage of some of the hops, and Belladonna was the name of uh, the, the Took's uh, you know, uh, matron, so I figured she would be the brewer of the family and named the uh, recipe after her. John Palmer, are you a nerd? Yes, I am a nerd. I'm a geek, actually, which is you know, a nerd with, that understands that he's you know, special. <laughs> Here we're weighing out rolled oats. Um, oats, as you know, impart a nice a uh, certain sweetness, a certain creaminess to the wort and to the beer. Um, by toasting these oats, we're going to bring out more of a cookie flavor, you know, fresh cookies right out of the oven kind of flavor, you know, a little warmness to that, uh, to that toastiness. And we'll see how good along here. Ah, you overshot. I claim it to be the density of the oat. Ah, there we go. <laughs> when you're toasting grain, you know, you can do it for longer and you're usually going for more color. In this case with the oats, we're really just going for aroma and flavor, so it's not a, we're not looking for a hard toast, I'm looking not, so they really, I'm, I shouldn't be looking for a hard color change. They smell good, they don't look terribly toasty, but um, 
We can probably give them some more time. Just trying to stir it up a bit and get, make sure we're getting some heat to the, to the bottom, the top, you know, get it homogenous. We're going on about close to a half hour here um, at three, 300. I kicked up 350 in this toaster oven. Um, but 300 to 350, depending on your oven, depending on how much time you give it, about a half hour or so, should be enough um, toastiness uh, to the oats to give a little extra dimension of flavor. I'm gonna go ahead and dump in the toasted oats. The, you can see the toasted oats have a little more golden color than they had before. Uh, they have a nice a toasted oat aroma. Um, tastes like toasted cookies. Yeah, just gonna dump those in, la di da. You know, the, the mid to high 30s. Um, Maris Otter malt um, as the base. And then some specialty malts, uh, like one pound of Crystal 60, uh, for a, I'm talking in terms of five gallon batch. Um, half pound of Brie Special Roast. Special Roast is an interesting malt. It's like a, it's like a biscuit, but it's, um, it's kilned a little differently. And it's got a real depth of uh, bread crust and biscuit and you know, different melanoidin flavors. On top of that, the, the Maris Otter pale malt and the special roast, we've got a half pound of flaked wheat. We've got a quarter pound of chocolate to give a little, you know, that color um, that you expect from a mild. And then we've got the half pound of toasted oats. And all of these, all these malts kind of combine to give, you know, a a nice deep amber color um, and a complexity to the to the bread crusts and biscuit and cookie flavors that we're looking for in this beer. I'm going to drain uh, two to three quarts into this pitcher um, to help set the grain bed. I'll pour it back in, do a couple more, and I'm looking for coming through the tube is I'm looking for fair clarity. Um, you know, the, it's not going to be clear. It's not going to be like apple juice. It's going to be like apple cider. What I'm looking for is to make sure I don't have any bit noticeable pieces of grain coming through the hose. Um, we want to set the, set the mash bed over the false bottom, get, get that filtering going, and be looking for a substantially particle-free wort coming out. That's the Vorloff step or recirculation step for clarity. When I, when I first started writing about brewing, um, there was you know, just a couple books on the market. The internet brewing community was pretty close. You, know, you almost had to pass muster before you could really post anything. There was a little bit of self-policing and, you know, and review by your peers. Uh, when, the, when the internet started taking off um, you know, around, oh, around 95, um, all of a sudden you're seeing all kinds of information being posted. Uh, you know, bad, bad advice as well as good. And uh, nowadays, you know, the, the, everything's matured a bit. Um, you, by and large, I think you find good advice more often than not. Um, there's still a lot of discussion on the forums and uh, I read the forums and I, I don't post on them as often as I used to, but um, there's still a lot of great information out there. And people are, you know, are discovering new brewing techniques all the time. You know, new brewing techniques with sours, and uh, you know, alternative fermentation methods and, and ingredients. Here we, you can see we started our boil. We've gone through the hot break actually. Um, we're at the 45-minute mark of our hour. So in other words, it's been boiling for about 15 minutes. We're going to do our single hop addition here at 45 minutes. This is uh, half of. Um, East Kent Goldings and half of Progress. We're doing it at 45 minutes um, as opposed to an hour. That will result in a little bit of hop flavor carry carryover. Mostly it's going to be bitterness though. We'll dump those in and we're done with our hop addition. Nice rolling boil we got here. You, you'll, you'll hear about rolling boils and you wonder, you know, should the wort be leaping out of the pot? No. Um, this is a pretty vigorous boil. You can see that there's a lot of areas um, of the wort moving. You get some roiling. Um, and th this is what you want to see. You want to see a high wort turnover. You're seeing a lot of motion in the whole volume. And uh, yeah, this, this is a very good boil we got going on here. Yeah, well, the OG on this one's turning a little bit high. Um, I think it's just because we're getting higher efficiency from the equipment than what we'd planned on. Um, but really that kind of works. Uh, you know, 
the if you think about uh, historic beers, um, you know, or do you think about the Hobbits in particular? You know, maybe they were brewing a little stronger uh, daily beer than what we would consider uh, typical. So uh, 1040, 1044, you know, a little on the high side for a mild, kind of out of the BJCP guidelines, but you know, not outrageous. A lot of the recipes that are in How to Brew um, came from my my extract and steeping grain brewing days. Um, I did I brewed that way for oh, probably two years when I was you know developing as a home brewer, um, living in a, in a condo didn't have room for a for an all grain system. But I, I did mini mashes, I did um, extract batches and steeping grain batches. Brewers shouldn't have any prejudices again about the method they're using for for brewing. Um, you can do extract only because we've got great extract these days. 20 years ago when I started brewing, uh, you know, all the extract we were getting was old. And, you know, there was a real aversion to liquid malt extract because of it. Usually it had been, it sat around for a couple of years. Um, there was a real push then to get into all grain brewing because then you got better freshness and better flavors out of the beer. But these days, extract is really fresh and brewing with extract can make great beers. This is where as hobbyists, we really you know, take it to the nth level where we're saying, you know, this is great, but I want that little bit more. And you, that's, that's one reason why a lot of brewers go to all grain, because it gives them that extra flexibility, that extra degree of freshness, um, and that extra actually really nerdy creativity that, uh, that hobbyists like. While I've tried to make all grain brewing more accessible with my book, How to Brew. Um, I'm certainly not trying to shove brewers from extract to all grain. I'm just trying to make the whole process accessible. Here's, here's our beer, the final result. We've got it transferred to two fermenters here. Um, nominally a 10 gallon batch, but I always kind of go over like 11 in this case. So we have more beer to, to fill up. And then when we actually rack to the keg, we get a full five gallon keg. Um, our final gravity came out at 1039, which is you know right where we wanted to be. Maybe just a touch high, but you know right really where we wanted to be with it. Um, tasting the hydrometer sample, it's got a really nice upfront bitterness that doesn't last. I mean, it, the, 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 the finish of the beer is uh, more of the sweet and, and cookie and, and uh, bready maltiness that we were really, really looking for. So I have high hopes for this beer. Till we meet again, uh, all for brew. And brew for all. And brew strong, everybody. Back here in the classroom, I'm enjoying a pint of what was uh, the oaked half of Palmer's Oaked Mild. One went just through regular fermentation as a mild. One got put on oak, maybe a little bit too much oak and a little bit too long. It comes across very strong. Uh, almost sweet in its kind of vanilla quality, but the base beer, the mild, is excellent beer. John Palmer got to taste both versions that he brewed here at NHC 2012 in Seattle. We had not only the oaked and the unoaked versions, but we also did a cask, a firkin of some. So he had some comments and um, we're taking those to heart and we're reworking the recipe a little bit with his blessings. We're, we're playing with some brown malts to give a little more robustness, kind of meatiness to it, maybe even some smoke malts. But either way, the Northern Brewer recipe development team is working away at it. We're gonna make sure that John's happy with it and there should be a kit related to this recipe coming out in early 2013, one of many things uh, going on in the test kitchen, the test home brewery for Northern Brewer. So keep your eye out for that. As it stands, it's still a very good beer, the bready, toasty character comes out, the great malt vibe of a mild is there. Um, so if you want to look at the recipe as it stands right now from the original concept, we'll put that up on brewingtv.com under recipes for sure, but be guaranteed the next generation and the official kit that gets released is going to be awesome. It's going to be Palmer approved awesome. We don't play. Mm -hmm. So until next time, I definitely want to thank John Palmer for keeping up with us uh, for a couple of years on this recipe, for coming to Northern Brewer Minneapolis and brewing it, and for working with Northern Brewer so patiently, 
getting this fine tuned and honed in so it's going to make an excellent beer kit for all home brewers to enjoy. Also want to thank Northern Brewer of course and our friends with benefits and of course all of you Brewing TV fans. Thank you for your support. Keep it real. All for brew. Brew for all. Mmm, tastes like Shire. I did mine on the counter. Yeah. So I just put it here and Counted like off. that. Yeah. Okay. Smashed it. But uh, how do you uh, how do you do it? You do it oh, really. It works every time. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Okay. That worked too. We're starting a new debate: countertop or a pan. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to bruise my delicate hands. <laughs>